Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing marvelously well. In today's lesson, we're going to have some fun mixing a good friend of mine and an artist I produced and co wrote with, Mr. Jared James Nichols. So, this is a song that Jared and I wrote oh, probably about eight years ago now on my porch out there in the back garden. It's an old guitar riff that I had from probably when I was 15 or 16 years old. One of my first kind of guitar riffs that I'd been playing for years and years and years and never put into a song. I got together with Jared and he took it to a new place. We wrote some lyrics and now we have the song. I recorded the song at my old studio. So it's live drums, bass, and guitar only. And there's, I think there's only one guitar track on it. So it's quite simplistic, but it is a blues rock track. Further to all of that, we're going to mix this from scratch. There is a mix from eight years ago, which I did on the SSL. So we can reference that, but I'm going to mix the rest of it in the box using exclusively IK Multimedia plugins. So you can go and you can download the multi-tracks. There's a link below. You can also go and get a ridiculous deal on IK Multimedia plugins as well. So all of that is available to you. And of course, if you're not already, you can join the Academy where we will be mix critiquing your mixes inside of the Academy of this song. I'm going to go through all the tracks. And the first thing I'm going to do is just pan them around and do some basic volume stuff and see what we've got. Mixing entirely on headphones, so I'm going to use my blue headphones, which have an extended bass end. They tend to be a little bass heavy, as it were, but I'm used to them. And quite frankly, I don't mind having a little extra low lows in there. So here's the track, and this is the one as mixed on the SSL. So have a quick listen. thing I notice is like I can hear that kind of aggressive compression on the guitar from the SSL, which is kind of cool inside of the track, but on the its own at the beginning, it's a little bit too pap, 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 that pappy, snappy sound. Have a listen again. It's really controlled after the initial transient. But I feel like I'd probably have a little less control and a little bit less exaggerated on the transient. First thing I want to do is just listen to the drums and get some panning organized. What I've done here, and you'll get these multitracks, obviously, is I've already done the tom trick, which means I have gain down in between the hits. So the toms are going to be cleaner. That's going to help you out a lot. I haven't got any samples in here yet, but I may add some on the mix. I don't know. But let's have a listen. So here's all the drums in mono panned up. I love that you can hear the band played in one room. Listen to that beginning. So I'm going to go through and do some panning. First thing I'm going to do is pan that hi-hat away from the snare. I personally do it, audience perspective. You can do it, drummer's perspective. I'm going to put it about 60% to audience perspective, i.e. my right. (laughs) 
Overheads are stereo, they're already panned. So really it's just a case of getting this floor tom, and I'm gonna go about 60% left. And there is a floor tom sample by the looks of it against it. So we could also pan that there, and we can choose whether we're gonna use it or not in a bit. So now the rack tom, I'm going to pan about 20% to the right, audience perspective. Again, if you want to do it um, from a drummer's perspective, that's absolutely fine. So there is a sample against that, which I'm going to pull down. So here is hi-hat panned 60% away from the center, audience perspective to the right-hand side. Rack tom, about 20% to the right-hand side, just the other side of the snare drum, and the floor tom, about 60% the other side of the snare, audience perspective on the left. And again. Okay, so that's the basic panning done. All the rest of the mics, depending on which DAW you're in, should all come up perfect because they are stereo. So you've got stereo overhead, stereo close rooms, and stereo far rooms. As you can see, it's not edited to a grid. It is cut to a click, so it's pretty steady, but you know, he's, it's breathing. You know, sometimes he's perfect, sometimes he's not, but it's a real performance. Okay, so now the next thing I'm gonna do, I'll suspend that group, and I'm just gonna have a listen to some of these elements. Here's the kick in. Sounds like a D112, sure it is. Here's the Sennheiser mic on the outside, on the kick out. And last but no means least is the kick rezo. If you've downloaded the multi-tracks, you can follow along with me. Here's the kick rezo. Now quite often I would put a second kick drum in front of the first kick drum and then mic that and that would resonate. It was quite a, quite a fun thing to do. Phase-wise, pretty good, pretty consistent. We could technically bring the kick in slightly back. You're never gonna get perfect phase alignment, but you can get good phase alignment. So let's have a listen to those three together and just create a quick blend. There's a big, thick kind of 80 to 100 on that rezo. There's a little bit of subbiness in the other two. Here's the kick out. But still a lot of tubbiness in the 80 to 100. Back to the kick in. You hear that snare bleed through it. But I don't think I'm gonna gate it. I'm not gonna gate it at all. So there's actually probably a you know, the most realistic modern kick drum sound is that kick in. So I'm grabbing the British channel and the British channel looks very SSL to me, let's be honest. So let's just, you know, go down to something around about 60 and have a listen down there for a bit of boost. So around about 60. Quite a decent amount of low end now. So it's defaulting to about 700 hertz here. So let's go to about four, there's three. So somewhere in the middle, about 350 here-ish and cut that. Before, after. Nice and tubby. Now, this kick's pretty even. I was using a DBX160 over the whole kick. So if I'm gonna put any compression on it, it will be slight. 
So high mids, usually for rock, I go to about 2.5-ish. If it was metal, I could, you could go five, six, seven. Or lots of people use 7K and boost the schnizzle out of it for like a metal sound. Before, after. Now I'll do incremental EQ. Once we bust the kicks together, we'll do some more of that as well. So let's go to the kick out and have a listen. The first thing I'm going to do is probably similar kind of EQ moves. So to make life easier, I'm going to copy down that EQ and start from that same place. So 60 boost, cut at about 350, boost at 2.5 on the kick out. Let's have a listen. Off. On. I like it. There's definitely a lot of like the 80 to 100 area. And once you get multiple kicks on, that will probably build up quite a lot. And you might say, what's wrong with that? Well, when there's too much of that, that's killing your bass guitar. So I always think about that in advance. But let's hear the two together. Off. On. So it's a good start, but... With a track like this, which is just vocal, one guitar, bass, and drums, you know, a less is more approach. You could tell I did quite a lot of work on that SSL mix, but on this one, I'm going to try and keep as much natural sound of the drums as possible. So let's listen to the Rezo head. I'm very tempted on this one to just make it thump early. So I'm going to copy down the EQ just to make it quick. But now I'm going to really suck down that 350 and probably not do any boost in the high mids at all. Very tempted to just take like that 4K and do this. So let's bring the low pass down to 3K. That's as far as it will go down, just as a precaution. Cut that 4.5K and, and below. It's basically quite a wide cue. That's as much as it can low pass. I might have to put another EQ afterwards. But now it's more of the thump. So I'm going to do a quick jiggle. So now I've just got that down. I'm trying, this is the only one I've got really drastic on EQ-wise, as you can tell. And it may or may not stand the test of time, but I'm bringing it down. I'm going to bring up the kick in. I'm going to bring down the kick out and listen to all the elements together. Turn everything off. Back on. It's a good start. Okay, let's throw in the snare. Let's have a listen. Hat. Now, with a snare, I really just want to do something quite generic. So I'm just going to grab IK's 1073. I think it's called the EQ73, but the 1073. And we're going to do a couple of fun things. We'll go down to about 110. See, 110 and 220 are the two favorite places for me for snare. Here's 110. Let's go to 220. Let's 
So now it's high pass. Bypass it. Now there's the ring at 1.6. I don't know if I'll need it yet, but if it's there if you need it. Okay, here's the high end. Off. Let's listen to the snare bottom on its own. There's quite a lot of ring in that together. Off. Back on. So it's a good start. That that low end booster is really nice. Put it in with the kicks and the hi hat, and we're starting to get a really nice drum sound with minimal amount of work. Let's throw in the overheads. I'm actually going to move the overheads up for my own sanity underneath the hi-hat. Now, the close rooms. Now, the old close room mics in my old studio were actually behind the kit, behind, from the drummer's perspective, facing the walls, so they were getting up reflected sound. It was actually a carpeted wall, so a little bit darker. with the close rooms out. Now the far rooms were just 57s on the far walls and they weren't measured in phase or anything clever. They're just a pair of 57s spread a long way apart. Definitely a lot brighter. Again, no EQ. No EQ. With EQ. No EQ. With EQ. So you can definitely tell that we haven't dramatically changed the drum sound. We've just gone for more of what it is. So let's throw in the toms and have a listen. Now you can tell I've done the bare minimum to get a usable drum sound to keep the integrity. It's not to say I won't get crazy and do some parallel drum compression, all kinds of fun stuff, but I'm keeping it to a minimum for the time being. So let's throw in the DI of the bass. He plays hard. Mike on the bass amp. That bass reso has so much low end. So the bass reso is a 15 inch cab miking another 15 inch cab. So hence how massive it sounds. Let's have a listen to all of them together. So that's just the guitar thrown in. Now, there is an echoplex. Believe it or not, there is a tape delay that I printed on the guitar. So I'm, that's panned opposite. So let's hear those things together.
bring that Echoplex down a little bit. Throw in the lead vocal. Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? I also printed Echoplex on the vocal as well, just for some dirty slap. Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it? Okay, the last but no means least thing to do is to listen to these gang vocals. The idea of these is for them to sound huge, so I'm just going to solo them for a second just so we get, get an idea, and we're going to sort of randomly pan them around a bit. Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it? So I've got like 30%, 60%, 80%, 100%, and then I'll have a pair pretty much in the middle. It looks like I've got three going on, so let's go ever so slightly left and right and have one in the middle. Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? So it gives us a group of people. I think there was about four or five of us in the room doing it. Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? I mean, with some basic EQ, we've got a rough mix up here. Something that if I was setting out for overdub, somebody was putting piano or something on it, this is what I'd send them. I'd do this. I wouldn't go absolutely nuts. So I would just give them a rough mix like this. And also it's kind of reminiscent because obviously when I was recording, I was applying small amounts of EQ and compression as we went down. So, you know, getting a rough board mix up on like this, you know, gives us a feel of the song. I like to do this. You know, now I've taken, especially if I hadn't mixed this before and I didn't know the artist, now I've got a rough idea of what the song should be. I'm already anticipating there might be some jiggery poker we need to do because you can tell the drummer in the first verse is playing fairly confidently, but in that second verse, there's some really light snare hits. So we might have to fly some stuff around, apply some different compression, etc. But you know, now we have a listenable mix and we can go to stage two of the master plan. I hope you're enjoying this. Don't forget, go download the multitracks, go and check out AK Multimedia's deal. Down there, there's a link. Okay, so I just created a bus a bass bus. So all three of these elements are going in. Let's have a quick listen to them. Here is all of them together. Now we've got to be careful. There's a couple of things. If we overly compress it, then all of the dynamics of these sections will be lost. 
So I'm going I'm sort of I'm on the fence because this is a very very simple song in instrumentation. One guitar, bass and drums with a lead vocal. And of course there's those gang vocals, but ultimately it's just three instruments. So um, let's do our usual trick. So what I'm doing is here's the DI. So what's the problem with this DI? Have a listen. He's basically playing really, really hard and it's sort of fretting out. So there's not as much low end in that as I would like. So here is the bass rezo, which, you know, once again is a speaker miking a speaker cabinet. So that's actually got a ton more low end. Let's listen to the bass mic. And the bass mic's sitting perfectly in between the two. So in this instance, I'm going to do something different to what I normally would do. Normally, I would take the DI for the low end. But in this instance, I'm going to take that resonator, that speaker mic in the speaker. I've got the T-Rex Equal EQ, which is all I need. And I am going to... There we go. Just make it into a low pass. So I'm going to go around about 200 here. You can change the cue here. I'm actually going to keep it where it is. So we'll make it about 200. See, I'm adjusting here. Let's have a listen. Great. Really good, consistent low end. Listen to this verse section where it's a little quieter. Now I'm going to go to the mic and give it a quick listen. Once again, it's just the mic on the cabinet. Now I'm listening to the DI. One of those I want to be clean and one of those I want to be more driven. It's interesting that the bass amp is more even sounding, isn't it? So let's go and grab the same EQ. And now we're going to do the opposite of what we just did. So I'm actually going to high pass. But this time again, I'm going to do it about 200. And now we're listening to the bass mic. Put the two elements together. Put the DI in. I'm going to make that slope a little bit more gentle. Actually, a nice little riff there. Never knew that was there. So with the guitars. Nice. Okay. So I want to put some gentle compression on each of these elements. So literally, let's just go for something 1176-ish. So that would be the black 76. Firstly, I'm on the bass mic. Fastest release time is full over to the right hand side. Okay, now I'm going to listen to the bass rezo, same section. I want to apply a little bit more, a little bit more compression to this so it's even between the two sections. So the low end doesn't disappear, even though the high mids are going to get louder and a bit more aggressive. I want this to be consistent. So even though he's playing soft in that section, I still want the low end to be sitting there nicely. 
So this is good. I'm getting one to three dB worth of gain reduction. Let's go down a little bit. And then this section is going to five. So this can be a lot more even. Put two together. There's like a tube rattle on it, which is pretty interesting. Okay, I'm listening to the DI now. And the DI, I'm going to take the same EQ, the high pass that I did with the amp. Copy up. Throw in the drums. It's interesting, I'm finding the click a little bit too much. So I'm going to go back to the kick in here and I'm going to just turn down that boost that we had on the high mids. And that means on several elements. Now with the bass now, what I'll probably do is do a global thing. So now it's bus to one. I'm just going to grab, again, you know, EQ and gentle compression. So grabbing the same EQ. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do another high pass. But I'm going to do it at about 50, 60 kind of area, but do gentle. So... That's what we got here. So now it's just going to get it out of the way of the kick. It's still got low end in there, don't get me wrong, but it's just shaping it. And then we'll grab another 1176 and give it a listen. Now, we haven't gone crazy on the drums yet. We haven't given it any real explosiveness. Um, I think what I'm going to do now, now that the bass is a little bit more even, let's go back and start bussing things. So the same thing we just did with the, with the bass guitar we're going to do with the kick. So I'm going to create a mono auxiliary. Let's do a couple of things. Let's grab an EQ again. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to EQ into compression. We've already used 1073s, like the, the 73s on the other elements. Well, I guess I can just create another EQ here. I'm going to go, you know what? I'm going to do a little bit of low passing, believe it or not. And I'm going to add, tighten the Q a bit, a bit of 60, let's have a listen. Now, this is something we were talking about earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to about 95, which is somewhere halfway-ish between 80 and 100. We can go If we want, we can go to exactly 90 and be really super pedantic. And I am going to narrow that cue and cut. And what this is doing is it's removing where the bass is shining. So where the bass really blooms. Often when you're using multiple kick drum mics, you get this kind of 80 to 100 buildup. So this is removing that. Let's give an illustration. So now let's listen to the kick and solo.
Now I'm going to throw in the bass guitar to listen. This top in one here is quite aggressive in the high mid still. So I'm actually going to just turn that boost off on the kick in. Throw in the whole drum kit. Grab another 1176 plugin, or the 76 as it's known. Now it's quite aggressive EQ you saw me putting on there. But if you hang out with guys like Joe Ciccarelli, who's one of the greatest engineers producers ever, he uses an enormous amount of EQ on his kick drum to shape it. So don't be afraid. If it makes it better, that's all that matters. Somebody says to you, you shouldn't be boosting that much. Don't worry about it. Does it sound better? That's all that matters. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the 670 on the bass guitar. Let's have a listen. So fastest release time. And then I'm going to go and make this 20 to 1, so it's limiting. So there's a lot of low end from that kick and it's pretty round and it's pretty huge. And it's probably a little bit too much if there was a lot of information in there, but I feel like I am on the kick sub here going to take down the boost a little bit. But I'm gonna keep it large. Now the bass is super, super growly. So the question is, do we want that? Do we want to favor the rezo a little bit? Maybe we'll try that. So a little bit more low end. But herein lies the problem. There is like an inconsistent bass note that keeps boom, 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 boom. So I think the first thing we could do is just on this bass amp where all the low end's coming from, we could add another gentle compressor in there, which would be the Fairchild emulation. So same thing, I'm going compression into limiting. Again, now the low end's getting a little bit out of control. This is what always happens. The last thing I'm working on is what always becomes the loudest. So now the low end on the bass is too much. And the beauty is we can balance these three elements. So now we have a better relationship between the bass and the kick drum. So I'm busting those two elements of the snare together. So frankly, I'm gonna do more of the same. 
We didn't do any EQ to the bottom snare. We just did a kind of a smiley face to the snare top. I'm going to use the equal, and I'm going to go below where I want to boost and do this. So what I'm doing is I'm boosting underneath, bringing up like the 150 and 200. So, and then what I'll do is I'll high pass close to it. And then I'll go at like a five, six, seven area up here and boost. So now this is the global for the snares. Have a listen. Take it off. And look at that snare top boost, which we were boosting at 220. I'm actually going to come down and make it 110 boost. There's already naturally a lot of 200 going on in it. Take the EQ off. Cutting the output of the bass a little bit by taking the last compressor on the bus and turning it down. Now, I'm intrigued. I'm going to go and listen to the mix that we did on the SSL at this point. First of all, everything's much louder. Let's have a listen. Put a bit more compression on that snare. It's always great having, you know, rough mixes or in this case, a board mix to see if we're going to beat it. I'm not trying to emulate it. I'm trying to beat it. I'm trying to give it a different kind of feel. Now, if you notice with the, the rough we had, the guitar's much brighter, and I actually don't mind that. Um, I'm gonna go and grab a 73, and I'm gonna go to like 4.8K and do a nice big boost. Maybe even a little 220 now that we've been boasting boosting the bass at 110. High passing at 80. Actually, high passing now at 160. That's 80. I've dropped in this sample, which you will get as well. And it's actually a good snare sample. It's got ambience on it. Here it is. It's got some room ambience, it's got some body. It's got a lot of bottom snare. I like it. Obviously, there's no dynamics to it. So here we have a build. So before we do anything, 
you know, let's try and make that work. As you see, it's like a snare fill, but it's pretty subtle if we listen to the original drums. If I throw in this undynamic snare, it's going to sound like complete poop. It's a machine gun. And the drum is a little uneven, so we're not exactly flattering him by having very loud, articulate snare hits. There's a few things we could do. You could do it, depending on your DAW, with volume. You could do it with, um, in this instance, with, I could take each hit. It's the in-between hits. It's the one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's the ones have to be louder than the two and the three. Now let's listen to the snare fill intro. Pick it up. Back in. Pretty good. Okay, now let's listen to the track with it in. Take it off. Listen to it with everything. And you can see the snare field there has the same issues. Now you can do this with volume. You don't have to do it with clip gain. If you're not using the same DAW as I am, you might not have clip gain. So it's just randomizing it enough so that it doesn't sound like a machine gun. So we were talking about the Andy Wallace trick, which is to take a snare sample and use it for the reverb triggering. And the reason why he does that is because of course the snare top has got hi-hat bleed in it, kick bleed, maybe some cymbal bleed, all kinds of other stuff. So why do you want to put all of that into your verb when you want a nice clean snare verb? So let's go and grab a reverb. So from the snare, we're going to send out five and six. Let's go and find ourselves a verb. So grab the CSR Classic Studio Reverb Hall. I'm going to go to three quarters of a second-ish and see what we've got. Try that in the track. Mute. Together. I like it already. So as I promised, I'm going to get some low end on that sample. And the great thing is, because it is a sample, we can boost the low end without worrying about bringing up anything else, because all that's playing is the low end. So I can go quite low and just boost. Why don't we get some high end? Widen that cue. Now, I've seen people do things like measure the time between beats. So just for schnitz and schniggles, got minutes and seconds. It's got length here, 766, and we were doing 750. Um, the only thing we're doing that is like the decay gets so quiet that, you know, by the time, you know, set 7 six six of a second you know just slightly over three quarters of a second happens it's already been inaudible for longer than that because it just gets sucked into the mix so i'm going to go like 0 0.8 or 0 0.9 seconds feels good Need 
So let's bring the verb down a little bit. Let's bring the sample down a little bit. Have a bit more of the natural drums and have a listen. Now we've brightened the guitar. Let's have a listen to the tape delay on the other side. Yeah, we did some fun things on the guitar because we boosted about 220 quite dramatic, well, relatively dra dramatically, and then 4.8, so about 5K quite dramatically. But I think we could put this, both of these elements in a room. So why don't we just get a stereo verb? You know what we're going to do? We're going to bus those two elements to one. <laughs> So if I want to do any further EQ, I can do them both together, creating another auxiliary, and that's going to be my reverb. Oh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to grab the Sunset Sound Studio reverb. And oh, we're going to go into Studio One. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into the ISO booth, because that's where, uh, you know what? We're going to go, actually, we're going to go into the chamber. Because the chamber is the Van Halen guitar sound. And it was in stereo, so we're going to feed it from this. It's interesting because I did some recording with Jared at Sunset Sound, which hasn't come out yet. You'll hear it soon. So good. Good. Out without it. With it. So let's set it up so the dry is all the way off, the wet is 100%, and let's blend it in. So good. What a great, great sound. If you get IK Multimedia plugins for no other reason than this, get the Sunset Sound plugin. I'm actually going to have some fun with it on the whole kit, I think, in a bit, because I love the sound of this. I'm bringing the reverb down because I'm just getting carried away. Let's listen to the um, previous mix here. Now what we have. I honestly think we've already beaten the SSL mix now.
Don't like the snare anymore. Our snare's better. It's brighter. We were using more samples on the other one. This one, we're only using one sample, and we're mainly using it just to trigger the reverb. So it's more of a natural snare sound. Everything's better. Guitar's bigger. Mix is wider. Just to see what the SSL mix was like on the vocal. Fantastic. Okay, so let's have some fun with the vocal. Don't you need it, baby? Can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Can you feel it? No auto-tune on that. That is our friend singing, Mr. Jared James Nichols. It needs some just generic stuff. I did print with some compression on it, but it could probably do a little gentle bit more. So why don't we... I'm going to grab a 1081, um, which is, they call the EQ81. Do some obvious things for those of you that know this. I'll do some high-passing, you know, probably about 82. Let's have a listen. Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can you... In our bypass, it's barely doing anything, that's fine. We can go to 15K and just boost it to open up the air across the top. Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it? Can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Can you feel it? So I'm a big fan of this. I've been using their classic stuff. I think we figured out since 2000 when it came out. I think that's correct. If there's anybody from T-Rex, anybody from um, IK Multimedia watching, I've always loved this. Don't you need it, baby? Can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Can you feel it? Bypass. Don't you need it? Fairly fast attack time, the fastest release time. So I'm using that as my gentle compression. Now, we could use the clipper, which maybe I might do, or we could just do what I would typically do, start off with that, which is grab an 1176, put it on 20 to 1, and then just use it to limit the occasional word. Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? It's possible now there might be a little DSing needing. Uh, you know, this is where this would be up to you for taste if you want to DS it. I'm going to go back and use the Sunset Sound. I'm going to go get, grab the plate. So now let's send from the vocal on the next available one, which is 11 and 12. And yeah, I am biased. Yes, this is my favorite studio. Yes, this is why I always track. Okay, so turn the dry down, turn the wet up. Let's go, um, well, we use the chamber. There's the plate and the spring. So let's try plate one. Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it? Bringing the guitar reverb down ever so slightly. As much as I love it, 
I don't want the whole song to be swamped in verb. Don't you see it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you see it, baby, can you feel it? Don't you need it? You trying to bring me down. So I'm decreasing the, the K time. Got your will, oh so tired. Now you're trying to break my life. Don't you need it, baby? Can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Can't you feel it? Don't you need it? Well, there ain't no use in crying. Just get left behind, baby. Mixing musicians, mixing people that play and just have a blast and have fun is fun. I hope you get as much enjoyment out of mixing these tracks as I am. Okay, so now we're just creating a group, 13 and 14, of the gang vocal. Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? So you can tell there's a build-up of, like, low mids in there. So I'm just going to grab an EQ first. It's kind of... It's a little, little ugly in there. So we'll have some fun with it. Let's grab, um, we'll grab the equal EQ. Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? It's about 450, 500 in there. Let's pull that out. That's where it's really kind of nasally. Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? It Don't moves around a bit, so baby, maybe. And then we can high pass. Don't you need it, baby? Can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Can't you feel it? Don't you need it? Don't you need it, baby? Can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Can't you feel it? Don't you need it? Don't you need it, baby? Can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Can't you feel it? Don't you need it? Don't you need it, baby? Can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Can't you feel it? Don't you need it? Don't you need it, baby? Can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Can't you feel it? Don't you need it? So we're high passing and low passing, and we're cutting some low mid. We're cutting that 500. We're cutting the low lows. We're making it mid rangey. But this is where, frankly, you could just grab our good friend, Sunset Sound, Studio Reverb, and just put it on it. And this is where you can use the wet dry here. So let's go back. Let's keep it in Studio One. And. Don't you need it, baby? Can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it? Let's see what the original was. Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? I'm making the reverb Don't less bright. Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Put some gentle compression on that. Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? We'll go back to our friend. 
Classic compressor. I'm cranking the stereo enhancement just to see how it feels against the lead vocal. So we'll take it out solo. Now I'm going to listen and just see what you prefer, you know, whether you want it a little bit further around the vocal. Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Let's listen to the SSL board mix. Don't you need it, baby, don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, don't you need it, baby, can't I think I prefer it bigger. Now, it could be brought down to more of a whisper as it was in the SSL board mix, but I think I prefer it like this. Let's have a listen. And you're to end my life. Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby, can't you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Well, there ain't no use of crying. You're just getting left behind. Don't you need it? I suppose all that really remains is a little bit of master bus processing. I don't have anything on the master bus at the moment. So why don't we grab the Versa mastering console? Here it is. I'm just going to press play and see where it defaults. It's certainly adding a lot of level. Don't you need it, baby? Can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Can you feel it? Don't you need it, baby? Can you feel it? Don't you need it? You heard me listen to it a bit. I mean, it definitely glues everything together. But one of the things I find is when I'm not mixing through something, I put the mastering software on at the end. I feel like it's maybe doing a little bit too much. So it's gluing it together nicely, but is it gluing it together too much? Let's do a couple of things. The input drive, actually, I'm going to bring it down. Don't 
Printing that that heavy, but I can definitely hear the input drive kind of gluing things together. And where it defaulted to was probably a little bit much for me. So I think what I'm going to do is just bring it down ever so slightly more. I'm not entirely sure how this is working, but it's better. It seems better with the input drive down and with the push control on more. It feels like it's gluing it together in a much nicer way than when, when the input drive is being hit in here. So really, if you have it, that's what I'd recommend doing. So bring the input drive down and use this push control. It's really helping. So what the push is doing is it's taking all of this EQ here and like hitting it. So it's exaggerating like where the kick is, where the bass guitar is, where the electric guitars are and the vocals and the high end from there. I kind of like it. The way that this was designed, because I know Gavin and Ruben's setup, is like all of this equipment is feeding from one to another, from another one to one. So, so when you're pushing it, you're pushing EQ into the next stage and then into another stage and into another stage. I am now, I don't know if you'll see me on camera, go to listen to this through my... So I feel similarly about it listening through my Genelex as I do on the headphones. The high end is a little bit aggressive, like the 6K and the 10 is starting to get a little bit of out of control. You hear the hat bleed in the snare quite heavily. So let's bring that down. Let's bring that down a little bit here. Maybe a tiny bit less 3K. I'm going to sort of like I, like, I like what's going on with the kick and the bass is good, but I'm going to bring everything else down so the kick is a little bit more up. And then the 6 and the 10K is down. So have a listen to that. Bypass. So what I'm going to do is you've got the SSL original mix from many years ago, seven years ago, whatever it was. And you're now going to have, I'm going to do two mixes. I'm going to do a mix with no bus compression, no bus EQ, and then one with the Lursa Mastering Console. So what you can do is you can mix it however you want to mix it. 
You can listen to my mix with no bus compression, no bus EQ, no nothing. And then you can hear of what the Lurson's doing. And of course, download the plugins, try them for yourself and see what kind of results you get as well. Thank you ever so much. Don't forget to download the multi-tracks and please leave us some comments, some messages below. And of course, you can check out IK Multimedia's ridiculous deal at the moment and get all of these plugins at a fraction of the cost. I think it's this ridiculous deal where you buy one and get 25 or so. I mean, it's insane. Anyway, check it out. There's a link down below. Go check it out. Thanks ever so much. So long, farewell, Alvida Zayn, au revoir. Mm-hmm.